conservationists in Washington County. That's the staff that helped organize this. I know we have a group of NRCS staff. Um, I think they're in the back. I see Katie and Mike raising their hands. Um, I think you'll beat some of them once you get out to the prairie strip. What we're going to do is that's about a half an hour. Then Stephanie's going to blow, blow, blow a big horn. And that means the switch. So if you're basically started at the corn, and on that side of the road, you're going to stay on that side of the road, you're going to switch. So if you're at the corn, you go up to the pollinator. If you're at the pollinator, you come down to the corn. People that are on this side here are basically flip-flopping this way. So if you're at the uh, cover crops, you're going to go over to the soybeans and back. Second time the morning has beep. These two groups that are here are going to go across the road. So if you started with a uh, you started with a red chip, you got the red chip, what you're going to want to do is remember you're going to the corn on the other side. Any questions? All right, if I got your chip. Well, I wanted it now because I planted my cover crops after the wheat was off. I did a hundred acres in eight hours. So you can move with this thing, get something done with it. All right, let's go down by the zapper. Let's see if Mike is here. Wow, well, this is only a zapper. Um, I purchased it last year. Old school manufacturer. They make the weed zappers themselves. I didn't build everything. So the gray box is up there. It's got the generator and the transformer in it. You need the electricity. Old school manufacturer. It's their design. And this toolbar, I bought from them too. They made that. So the, the front bar here is what. It actually zaps to kill. The generator creates electricity and the transformer transform it. This bar here has wires that hook to it to put the electricity to it. There's 100, about 135,000 volts that'll go through this bar, anywhere from 100 to 300 amps. That back bar here is a neutralizer, so if there's any electricity in the plant, it neutralizes, it grounds it out so that it can't electrify any of the unit that's behind there. These discs here are hooked to this bar to help grow. And then you got different mixes here. And what we did is we tried to get an idea of stuff that would last over winter. And then you got your peas and you got your sun hemp that uh, down the ways that creates nitrogen. Sorghum is awesome because it's sweet. Um, the radishes will put a three foot tap root, so that helps break up your compaction. So as we've got sorghum sedan grass here that's really, really tall, there was a bag here last winter, and we think what caused that is the juices that came out of the bag fed that with all the nutrients. And you can see it's twice higher than the rest, it's dark green. We're actually going to maybe take in this as feed, because the feed value is just phenomenal here. And cattle, cows. Uh, one of the dry feeders who uh... and this is what it would look like with no control at all. No till with no residual. And there's you loss here too. I mean sure we cleaned it up, but once you get weeds that are bigger in size, you got canopy, it's robbing moisture, it's robbing nutrients that you won't get back. Without any pre, it's a pretty weedy plot. That's what we'd expect in Wisconsin. That translates all the way to yield. We come in and we clean this up with status, glyphosate, and other post-emerge products that we feel appropriate. But these no-till fields firm up so much faster. It's holding that water, but there's pores there where that water can get down. That earthworm activity, I mean, if you start no-tilling, that's a three to four year transition so that ground really fully adapts. But once it does, it's in your favor.
growing. In speed is different than in seed. In seed, we wouldn't be able to tolerate that. We couldn't sell that product. In the feed store, well, that's totally fine because that's bird seed, so that's fine. Soil, and then the roots from the corn will follow that next year. That's kind of how no-till works. And that's all nutrients. When that breaks down, that's all nutrients that the corn or soybeans can get. So I can, I can see, uh, just because I know the varieties from, uh, from my past, but see where the husks are starting to turn brown? That's rows one through three. Just because it's a little bit earlier maturity, um, so that's 97 day. The other ones are still greener, a little bit longer maturity. They're gonna hang on, last a little bit longer. So that's 105. So I could pick that out pretty quick just because I've, I've had uh, plenty of experience doing that. There is a, a relatively new disease in the corn world and it's called tar spot. And what it looks like is somebody took a paintbrush and just took a, and, and flicked it towards the, the, uh, the, the leaves of the, the corn. Little black specks. Yep. And uh, so on here, it's it's really not too bad. Ross put a a fungicide, which pretty much does a pretty good job of holding this stuff back. You can see the little the little tiny black dots. But that is that is tar spot. So this has actually done a pretty good job holding this back because you, so this is a relatively new disease. We've only seen it in Wisconsin for four, maybe five years. I got it in 2018, and it devastated one. Okay. Well, full week or few. To Mike's point, it can dry down the corn very, very fast and cause yeah. it to cannibalize itself and allow the corn not to reach full maturity. So it's so, pretty devastating to a crop. Yeah. I, know, I mean, that's our recommendation as agronomists. On a farm, we say at least three hybrids. Right. You know, you want to you want to spread your risk. So what we're trying to do is we're intercepting water that's coming down the hill that's creating erosion and trying to slow it down through a pinball action through the stems of this having year-round persistent cover. So that's generally where this all came from. Uh, I of course like it because this is a native community. We're not throwing in a bunch of cool season grasses that we don't want to see around here, which is what we want. Um, this is actually just an ATV seeder, but it actually has the design that's inside of here to deal with one of these actual seed issues. What do you think is going to happen in a grain drill if we try to run that through? Anybody? Yep. It's going to bridge. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be fun. Well, hi, everybody. So I'm Thelma Heidel Baker. Um, I work for the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources Conservation Service um, out of West Bend. So I cover Washington and Ozaki counties. I do conservation work. So I get to work with farmers and, and help do great things on their land. And one of the things that's really cool about these pollinator strips, like Greg mentioned, they're really great for soil erosion, trying to protect our soils, but there's something else that's a huge benefit to these. Can anybody think of what that may be? What, what do we see out here? Flowers. What, what visits flowers? Pollinators. Pollinators, yes. And so many other insects. Um, so this is really great habitat for wildlife, some of the smaller wildlife insects. That Bumblebee, yes. So bumblebees. Honeybees are actually not native to North America. Um, they are a livestock species that we raise here for what? Honey. Honey, yeah. Yep. And for pollination of fruit crops. So anyway, that's a quick overview. I know you guys have to get going, so just take a look at those insects. These are wasps. Realize that like these habitats like this provide so many different benefits, not just for soil health, the water quality, the pollinators, the beneficial insects, and the beauty of just the farm itself. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to walk through a couple of considerations that we haven't talked about so far um, today, and then we're going to dive into the actual combine. So 
I really appreciate Ross getting the combine out for us and keeping it dirty. This is number 19. Um, this is number, I think, six for this year, Combine Cleaning Clinic. We've done 19 combines of uh, just about every make and model we've covered now for the common machines out there. 50% of the weed seeds that were sent in came from the head or the grain platform. 29% came from the feeder house and 19% came from the rock trap. The good news, 2.4% came from the rotor. The rotor is gonna be tough to clean in under 30 minutes when we have to clean these other components. Clean grain system, we can dump out. We can run the combine then safely um, and clean out the clean grain system if we're switching crops, that type of thing. For weed seeds, we're not worried about that. The back of the combine, we're not gonna to be too worried about. However, wheat provides a great visual illustration of where we may see weeds hang up on the axles, the back of the combine. You know, some of the combines have a more aggressive residue management system on the back. We're just gonna blow off the top of that. We've found weed seeds hanging out on the top of that, but once they're on the top of that residue management system, they're probably gonna ride down the road and stay there all season. They're probably not gonna come back off of that. It's gonna be stuck to the biomass. Anybody that spoke today that was helping the teachers would be nice to come on up. Um, again, I would like to thank, thank uh, Ross for hosting for us today. Um, big group. We had about, what, 130 people? For Stephanie. So that's a nice crowd. That's what I was hoping we'd get. So I'm very happy. Grew, it germinated, had moisture, did photosynthesize, and died. So tight canopy, corn silage acres, narrower rows are all stuff we have taken into consideration. If you have those, we might have to switch to a few different species for you. But there is always something we can do. There's never a time we can't do something. We just choose not to do it. I guess is what, I, what one of my messages I tell everybody is, we just choose not to. But we can always do something. It takes a few years to see the big benefits from it. Everybody asks me how long. It all depends. But we usually figure anywhere from four to six years, you're gonna really see the turnaround.